Um, hello, uh, my name is Daniel Zuczuk. Thanks for the team for inviting me for this wonderful experience. And, and I'm already looking forward to, to the rest of the panels, discussions, etc., etc. I'm, uh, I'm also super happy to be that my bio is included in this handsome publication that you, that you published. And thank you, Francesca, for this kind uh, 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 introduction. Um, so we have, as everyone here, I have limited time, and let's try uh, to see how much I can squeeze in. I have too much material, of course, uh, but maybe I can just skip through and let's see how that works. This, uh, this like, brief uh, introduction into some of our practices will be, uh, of, uh, will be uh, um, divided into two parts. One will be historical, with where, where I will try to describe how uh, the history of the museum and our reconstruction of the history of the museum and the uh, key objects or non-objects, in fact, of the museum uh, is feeding into uh, uh, our everyday uh, uh, solutions for our problems. And then I will have some, uh, some, um, uh, some case studies from my own practice that, were, that are in relation to, to uh, the general problems. Um, we don't need that anymore. Uh, uh, this is an, an, an early image of the, the first kind. This is 1931. The museum is being opened uh, with the exhibition entitled uh, The International Collection of Modern Art of the AR Group. AR stands for Revolutionary Artists, being a group of uh, uh, a sculptor, Katarzyna Kobro, uh, a painter, uh, Władysław Strzemiński, uh, two poets, uh, uh, Julian Przybosz and uh, Brzenkowski, and uh, uh, one more painter, Henryk Starzewski. They formed an alliance to uh, found a public art, modern art collection in Poland that they wanted to give to the, muse the National Museum in Warsaw. But people at the National Museum in Warsaw at the time were not pretty sure if that's really art. So they, so they decided to give it to uh, the uh, City Museum in Łódź, which changed entirely its focus thanks to that. Łódź is an, it was an industrial city based on textile, pretty modern in a sense that it was founded in the 19th century. So this collection landed in a, uh, a really interesting environment in this young country that was unexisting before the First World War for at least 123 years. Um, the, the director that took over uh, in 1931, uh, for, or a bit later actually, uh, was really open to uh, experiments in uh, hanging, but also in telling stories through, uh, through modern art. Um, this is the, the floor plan uh, that uh, he devised shortly after the uh, Second World War, where when uh, uh, Museum, Museum Stuki was given uh, an, an old industrialist palace to house. Everything, as you may expect, was nationalized in Poland after the Second World War. But uh, there was still an open mind for a brief moment to, in, in communist authorities to uh, re reinstall this modern art collection and this modern art museum. Um, so, uh, Minich, uh, Marian Minich, because that's the name of, the, of this director, was using, for example, uh, facsimile copies or reproductions in, in, his, uh, in his hand because he would have, uh, 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 for example, uh, a room of uh, post-impressionism, and post-impressionism, French post-impressionism was unavailable, uh, of course, for him, so he would buy uh, reproductions in Leipzig and Paris, and this started even in the 30s. Um, I'm, I'm saying that to show you that, that there was a free-form kind of approach to, or freestyle kind of approach to originality and, or, originality and copy at the root, uh, the four, uh, four pedagogical reasons, of course. Uh, 
But this hand was uh, was made. Uh, uh, it's a collection hand. Uh, it's an, a permanent exhibition of the collection, and it's based on, as you can see, uh, for, for, for the evolution of modern art movements. That is going from post-impressionism through expressionism, through uh, through uh, formism, uh, through cubism, uh, up until constructivism, and finally uh, the neoplastic room, which was designed by well, Władysław Strzemiński uh, as a as a room kind of similar to Cabinet de Trakten in Hanover, as a permanent display of abstract art. Then you would have like surrealist room, which is like scrammed there somewhere. It's not really important. Uh, in fact, it's a dead alley or a dead end, uh, uh, for, because this is where 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 the thing is happening and the thing happened, so to say. Because for for Mini and for Strzemiński, uh, for the neoplastic room meant the fulfillment of the promise given by modernism. This is the end of the. This is the, the end of art as such, and the end of history. This is the moment where, where, where every single thing is suspended. It's a Kojevian or Hegelian moment of uh, overpowerment of the art itself, and like, it dissolves. This is, the, this is the, the original photograph, and this is a photograph from the 90s. And you must know that since it was uh, built in 19... Uh, 40, uh, 48. Uh, it was just uh, it was destroyed just two years after, uh, for, because the socialist realist uh, doctrine was introduced and uh, uh, for it was painted white and historical painting were paintings were were hung in there. And in fact, the scene uh, of painting it white is is being depicted now in the in this last movie on that of Andrzej Wajda, which is about the final years of uh, what is was Strzemiński, the, the title of the film is After Images, um, which is connected with the whole ideas of, with, with, with all of the ideas of Strzemiński. Um, so, so this was a permanent room in a permanent collection of, of uh, Hang that was meant to be there forever, so to say. That, that is signifying that this is the end of, of, of art as we know, uh, for, and this is the future and the past, and it's achronological at the same time, but also because of the soul's history. I mean, Strzemiński dies two years after it's being destroyed, uh, for eight years afterwards, in 1960, it is reconstructed, but on the basis of those black and white photographs, and the memories of uh, Marian Minik, and director, the director of the of the museum, and uh, Bolesław Utkin, one of the students of Strzemiński. Um, this is this is another discussion: the authentication of a reconstruction as such. Like you have to use uh, eyewitnesses to authenticate, etc., etc. But also, like being the director helps <laughs> to, to 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 reinstall it. Uh, Another photograph uh, that shows you that this is, uh, although this is pretty much fixed, but there was much experimentation in, like uh, the hanging, some of the pieces were, were included or excluded, etc., etc. And then you'd also have, a few years ago, we did uh, uh, proper conservators uh, research into deeply into the walls to uh, f find out what was the original color. Uh, because it points out to a, a, a really interesting moment that it is the original and it's not the original at the same time. Because the paint that we see is not the original, but there's the original paint somewhere underneath. So it still has the, this aura of being something more than just a copy. Uh, but being more than just something artificial, so to say. Artificial is not a, is not a good word to use. Um, these are the drawings that were made by uh, Utkin, uh, for the student of Strzemiński, when they were trying to uh, for reinstall the, the, uh, the, the 
neoplastic room. What the, what the conservators find out uh, is that uh, uh, it was a bit, the colors were a bit less neoplastic than uh, the recreation. Uh, maybe because of the, it's 1948, the, the paints that were available were not perfect, etc. So maybe that's why. But as you can see, this, this, uh, this, this whole shaky status of, of this object, non-object in fact, because it's not even in our inventory, it's not, it's not considered by the museum as the work of art, which I think is good. It's liberating rather than... Uh, for, uh, than, uh, for, for, than a solid structure of having this under conservation constantly, etc., etc., is is signifying our loose, so to say, also uh, for, uh, uh, approach towards what's original and what's what's a copy. Um, but this was uh, really, I mean, when Jarosław Suchan, the director, who is now with us for, uh, for nine years, came uh, for, for, there was a, uh, for the second building that we have was almost done. And uh, there was a question if we should move the neoplastic room with the collection to that, to that, to that room, to, to, to the new building, which was a post-industrial building. Um, but, the, but the answer that is obvious for me uh, now is of course not. And not, not because of the originality, but because uh, of the role in the narrative that it served for decades. Uh, for the role that, that signified the fatalism that is embedded in modernism. That it has to fail, so to say, that Straminski had has to die uh, out of pneumonia for two years after this being the, the neoplastic room being destroyed, and that every single promise given by modernism cannot be fulfilled. Um, so the collection was liberated from this burden um, and moved to the new building, whereas in the, uh, in the uh, uh, old building, the, the, the hanging around the neoplastic room, in all of the rooms, was uh, including uh, works of art that were rather coming out of the neoplastic room than leading towards it. So, for example, this is a Daniel Buren's Caban uh, that uh, was prepared to show uh, Henrik Staszewski's work, and it was prepared, it was prepared in 1985 as a direct... Uh, Five minutes? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, we're treating more the neoplastic room as a, uh, a kind of procedure because moving out uh, uh, the collection allowed us to speak with the works of art achronologically, so to say, to use anachronism as a as a matter of uh, of creating new uh, uh, narratives around what's, uh, what's uh, mm, I mean, to, to lose this burden again, so to say. But the burden being also intellectually compelling and being still an anchor uh, of the whole, uh, or the backbone of the whole uh, thinking about what is, uh, what is collection and what is the role of the institution. But then being on another level. Like it opens a chapter, not closes, so to say. And, uh, and in reference to that, I'll, I'll show you then just one example, not uh, two examples, although two would be much better, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a work of reconstruction that I did together with David Crowley for a, of a show entitled Sounding the Body Electric that had two versions, in uh, one in Woods and the other one in London. And the, the show was about the sound art practices in Eastern Bloc uh, of, uh, between 1957 and uh, 1984. Uh, and as you, can, as you can imagine, a lot of the objects were just missing, where we had just photographs, etc., etc. I, I don't have to speak about that because that's the point of the whole seminar. I assume that we don't have those objects. 
fruit. Uh, I'll move on through that. But this was this was a, a really significant moment. Uh, for, for, through our research, we considered this being the first sound installation in Eastern Europe. We, we, we wouldn't use the notion of sound installation. You know what I mean. I just don't like it. Uh, the spatial musical composition is directly, uh, or was directly connected with Kogro and Strzemiński uh, because of the title. Spatial compositions were usually the titles of the pieces of Katarzyna Kogro, her sculptural uh, for, uh, elements. And this was uh, an environment that uh, was created by an architect, a composer, and, uh, and a sculptor in Warsaw in 1968. And it's a pretty straightforward uh, thing. So you have uh, a corridor with those sound booths, with uh, a speaker and a, and a light uh, a source of different color, and each speaker reproduces different sound, uh, composed by Krause. This is like the, some of the original photographs. Uh, we were super happy that, that uh, both uh, Krause and Kelm are, are around and they could really help us to understand what that was, in fact. But it was also uh, rooted in neoplastic room as uh, uh, for, for Krause saw it and Kelm saw it in the uh, mid 60s and considered creating an environment that would, have, that would include the temporal <coughs> element into it too. And this is what we were able to, to, uh, to do, to reconstruct. And we needed this reconstruction, in fact, because of the year when, when the original was created. 1968, uh, uh, of course, was, was still a moment for a lot of those nations of like, fulfillment or, or delusionment about the emancipatory potential of art. And this is emancipatory because this is, in fact, a graphic score that you can use uh, for, for two. I mean, this floor plan is a graphic score for a composition that you can maneuver through and uh, reinterpret. So the viewer listener was meant to reconstruct his own piece on the basis of the, the data given by uh, the artist themselves. Two more minutes or one more minute? Another example then. Sorry. How do I stop this music? Shouldn't shouldn't go on. Yeah. Um, so, but this this led us to. Uh, for, Okay, we, we, we need another, another uh, uh, for a few less example of this kind of an approach. Uh, for, and we couldn't find a political piece of music that would speak about the darker times that we're just approaching. Uh, for, we've heard about this piece, a, a graphic score by Sabolc Esteni, the uh, composer and pianist, and Krzysztof Wodiczko, known for his interrogatory and political uh, art and uh, design. Just Transistor Radios uh, was a piece that, uh, when I've heard about it, I thought, okay, that's an imaginary landscape by John Cage, uh, for, for, because it uses uh, radio waves uh, and uh, an ensemble of eight ra players on transistor radios to construct a piece. Um, uh, I'll show you, this is a, a performance that we prepared on the on the basis of a I think I think we can try. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Let's try. I think that it was switched oh, off. Uh-huh. Maybe the other piece is not playing. That's <laughs> okay. No, it is. <laughs> no, no, no. You just just imagine. I mean <laughs> the music is secondary, really. The music is secondary because uh, it's even though we tried to reconstruct it as uh, justly as we could, of course we couldn't because of the context. Uh, Just transistor radios was based on the fact that uh, there is radio jamming. <laughs> you know, uh, some of you might recall how radio jamming 
was, uh, for, I mean, what was radio jamming and how, how, how you would hear it. It was uh, a piece of music overlaid on free radio Europe, for example. So you'd have a mix that was uh, intentionally there to make both signals <laughs> legible. Um, of course, we couldn't have that. We just had radio waves with like Polish Catholic radio, etc., etc. So in fact, it was it, it didn't matter much if we would reconstruct uh, imaginary landscape number four uh, by Cage or this uh, one of the key pieces of music that was not recorded also because of the fact that it was it was political. Um, Sorry to, to, make it so, to make it so uh, f f fast. I was hoping that 20 minutes is longer. But <laughs> as you know, like, we, all, we all try to squeeze as much as we can. Uh, but what, I, what I want to stress is that the, for the reconstruction and the thinking for reconstruction, uh, also because of the, all of the black spots in the history of, for example, Polish performance art, Polish installation art, or Eastern European practices in general, uh, for, is at the root of our thinking. And we really have, uh, for, uh, I, I wouldn't say loose now, approach to what is reconstruction. It's not loose, but it's uh, intellectually compelling each time to work with the neoplastic room uh, as an encore for our collection and uh, uh, a theoretical object that we can use to make reconstructions like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Okay. So if you want to take like one coffee or maybe one water, three seconds, unless you also have questions for Daniel. Yeah, sure. I don't know, do you I'm have questions? I'm just gonna give you the time while the question's gone, if any. No. Okay, we keep everything for, for the discussion, which is fun. Okay, so you need a super quick break or shall we move on? There's a question. Oh, there's a question, great. Thank you. Sorry, maybe I did not hear it, but is there any results already on the original colors of the of the rooms? Yeah, and yeah. any plans about it? Yeah, I mean the the, the full reconstruction uh, would uh, would uh, would be really expensive, uh, but also like our thinking is that uh, since uh, he was using. Straminski was using actually really strange paints, right? something that you wouldn't use for this purpose. So we we tried to convince ourselves that that, it's, that it was uh, uh, a compromise from the very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, and hence we we don't want to uh, reconstruct it as it would have been and should have been maybe. Like, but on the other hand, treating it as an idea, for example, like the uh, uh, neoplastic room will visit, will, will be reconstructed next year in two venues, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Museo Reina Sofia, uh, in, uh, for Strzemiński and Kobro uh, exhibition that uh, Jarosław Suchan is curating, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, a, a partial reconstruction at Vanaba Museum. We're we're really we're really happy to like give this out. It's not part of the walls. It's not part of the paint. It's 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 a theoretical object, so to say. It has to be just, but just to or it has to be just uh, for. for for several elements, but I don't suppose that the actual paint is one of them. Like, you know, the the original structure of the paint. 